He's been described as a national treasure, but he describes himself as a national trinket. Currently touring the UK in his show, Lord of the Mints, it's Julian Clary. Julian, thank you very much for joining us today on your Kent TV. Canterbury, nearly home for you, I guess is it at the moment. You know, because you're not too far away, Kent person, so um, welcome to Kent in many ways. No, thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to work out the local references I'm going to make. Cause usually I'm a stranger in town, but this is kind of my my own backyard, yes. But this is as close as home, I suppose, as far as the tour gets, because looking at I mean, you were in Dublin on Friday. And, I was, yeah. And, and all over the show. I mean, you started, was it Western Supermare? Yeah, yeah, that seems a lifetime ago. Um, I mean, I quite like the whole energy you get from being in a different place every night and, the, you know, the different accents apart from anything else. Um, when you go up north and there's a bit like that. And what's the, what's the Canterbury accent? I don't know. I was born and bred in Whitstall County, so I guess this is it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It could be a bit more estuary, to be honest, but um, you we'll know. We'll find out. Yes, I'm sure you will tonight. But I mean, Canterbury itself, there are so many areas around the city, and, and you can, you know, sort of some think they're posher than others. Do you, when, wherever you go, do you try and lend to the area that you're in and try and get those local references in the show? Yeah, I've been studying the local newspapers to see what's going on. There's been a bit of a rumpus here uh, this week. There was some sort of student thing where they were going to pub crawl and uh, there was a lot of noise which uh, was of great concern to the locals. Drunk students making noise Definitely that, do you, and urinating in a subway. Can you imagine? You wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, not now. He would, but you wouldn't. <laughs> He's lovely. I mean, Julie, do the dogs go everywhere with you? And to... They do. They're having such a nice time. I mean, they don't mind the travelling. They just sleep in the car and um, then they get you know a different exciting park every day and um, we're going up to Scotland I think it's next week so that'll be good for him. And uh, is it Glasgow the one that you're really looking forward to doing as far as the tour is concerned? Yes I mean I look forward to it all but Glasgow is you know as, a, as for a comedian it's kind of make or break place and I've always had a really good time there and uh, they're very um, extrovert and, and noisy and they and witty you know so I, I look forward to it. Very different than Kentish people, I guess. I don't I know, we'll see. But am I right in saying that it was five years before you started touring again? You had quite a gap, didn't you, in doing yeah. other things? Yeah, I was writing books and things. Actually, we did our first warm-up tour in Canterbury at the Gulbelkin. 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 I can't even say it. And uh, they were quite shy, because there's some adult material in the show, and uh, it's educational. I was going to um, say, there's a 16 sort of, uh, am I right, that you have to be 16 to come? Do, do you check people's ages, does it have to give an idea as they come in? It's for the best, but I was talking about, they're all smiles, and then I went into one particular routine, which is for the over 16s, and the smiles all kind of faded, and I saw little cat's bottoms <laughs> looking at me. And is there anybody in particular, with that in mind, that you would be really nervous knowing it's coming to see whether it's a member of the family or someone you think, oh, I don't really want them to see that? The Archbishop, I expect. <laughs> Apparently he came to see Paul Merton in this very hall. Did he? Yes. Do you think he'll be in? I think, you know, actually, he probably would, because he was here, I think, um, d not so long ago. They had a festival, and he actually did a, a sort of a, a Q&A in his lot. Did so, he now? Yes. I don't suppose I'm his kind of thing. My parents came, we were in Swindon, where my right. parents live, and uh, Auntie Tess came, who's 96, my godmother. And I said it's not really appropriate for a woman of your maturity, which she found a bit condescending, and she said, she was sort of her jaw got all fixed, and uh, she put new batteries in her hearing aid, and uh, she loved it. I mean, it's not that rude, it's just, just a bit fruity, you know. But that's okay, that's, that's what you want, a bit of fruitiness, I think, in yes. the county. And I think, also, we've become more liberal-minded as far as our, our comedians are concerned, and we're, you know, a bit more accepting, aren't we, of different ways, and, and just, yeah. I suppose, there is so much out there at the moment, who do you sort of look at and think, yeah, I, I quite like him watching them on television, or you'd perhaps buy a ticket to go and see on a Sunday night? Oh, I wouldn't go and see anyone. I don't like going to see people. <laughs> do you not? I don't like going out, no, I like to stay in. But I, I mean, I, the people I see on television, I, think, I kind of think everyone's quite funny. Uh, and everyone's got their own different niche, and that, that's what has been nice about this too. I've done lots of other shows. I did Cabaret in the West End, and I did. Um, Boy George's musical Taboo. So, but this is back to just me, and I'm, you know, I can, I can change it every night if I want to, and it's just Im immersing everyone in my world. So, that's like an indulgence, but I, that's why I quite like it as well. Does it feel like a long time ago since 1981 in Covent Garden? Am I right? Oh, that's position? a long. Yes. Well, it is. Um, yes, it, it does seem a long, long time ago. 
and everything, really, television's been quite kind in lots of ways uh, to you, but it's, it's seeing you grow uh, as a person with the diversity. I mean, I, Strictly coming third, fantastic. I know we're being asked to be on Strictly for a start, you know. How do you get a I, I, They keep missing out. Like every year I'm there waiting to be called and it doesn't happen. How do you, how do you get? I don't know. I, I wasn't really interested when they first asked me. I thought I didn't. I thought Passa Doble was some kind of stomach upset. I didn't know anything about ballroom dancing, but um, I don't know how you get chosen. You need to push yourself forward. Do you think? Yes. And I mean, you did. You were sort of at the rank outside, if you like. You were a bit, you know, a dark horse. You it's a very, very interesting strong. thing to do. You know, you really do learn a whole new skill, and and you're with a world class dancer for hours at, at a time. Um, it's really enhanced my life in many ways. Because you, know. you actually partnered Erin, didn't you, as well? And she's done, yes. you know, particularly well again this year. Do you watch it? Are you watching the series? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm slightly, I'm like some kind of jealous ex-boyfriend. As when I, I know, asked, you feel I like, oh, I should be doing that. Or? I know, and I can't dance with anyone but Erin. I've tried at weddings and things, um, but it's because she's like the Ferrari of the dance world. Anyone else is like uh, some old banger, you know. She is brilliant. They are amazing. Is there anybody got your money on this year? Would it be Erin? The people I fancied have, have gone now. That, that, that big boned woman from um, Loose Women, the gravy woman, what's oh, her name? Oh gosh, what's her name? Um, the gravy woman, that's awful, isn't it? You know who you are. The gravy woman. <laughs> Oxo lady. Yeah, I thought she was going, I thought she Oh yes, I, I think of it when I'm driving home tonight now. I, I don't, don't know the people who are obviously really good and are obviously danced before. That's not really what it's about, is it? So where does Julie and Clary go next? I mean, you've got another month of this tour. It's a two month tour. I mean, what is next for you? You, you wow. can sit back and write another book? I'm going to do pantomime in Crawley over the festive season. Then I'm going to do some more gigs, and then I'm going to take the tour to Australia. And then I'm going to write another book. Then, uh, you know, having been out and about, it would be nice to just lock myself away in Kent and um, spend the summer writing. Well, I hope you do. And thank you so much for talking to us this evening. And, and um, bringing the dogs well, beautiful. And look how well behaved they were. You he smells a bit. Does he? Yeah, sniff sure your hand. Me. Sniff your hand. At times I've said that. <laughs> you see. <laughs> and I did. I can no, only apologise. I think he's being mean. I think you're beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you.